Welcome to the Servants of Grace podcast hosted by Dave Jenkins. Our podcast exists to provide trustworthy expository messages through the Bible and faithful answers to your theology questions. Now for today's episode, let's join our host, Dave Jenkins. Well, welcome back to the Servants of Grace theology segment. On today's episode, one of our listeners writes in, and they have a great question. What is the pseudiograph? Well, the pseudiograph are books that attempt to imitate Scripture. Uh, they were written under false names. Pseudiograph comes from the Greek word pseudio, meaning false, and epigram, meaning to inscribe or to write falsely. The pseudiographical books were written anywhere from 200 BC to 300 AD. They, these are spurious works written by unknown authors who attempt to gain a readership by tacking on the name of a famous biblical character. While the pseudiographical books may interest students of ancient religious thought or even of history, they're not inspired by God and they're not part of the Word of God. These books are not included in the 66 books of the Scripture because they were not they were written under false names. Any falsehood or pretense negates the claims of truthfulness that they would make. And the second reason there are historical errors in these books. One example of this is in the Apocalypse of Baruch. The fall of Jerusalem occurs in this book's words in the 25 year of the Janokai, the king of Judah. And the problem is, Jeconi was 18 years old when he began to reign, and he only reigned three months, 2 Kings 24, 8 tells us. And so there's no way to reconcile a 25th year statement with the biblical account. Third, seographical books contained heresy. For example, in the Acts of John, John presents is presented as a spirit or a phantasm who left no footprints when he walked, who, who could not be touched, and who did not die on a cross. Well, the Apostle Paul had to deal with the pseudograph written in his day. Addressing the Thessalonian church, Paul says not to be alarmed by a letter supposed to have come from us in 2 Thessalonians 2.2. 2. Someone had tried to mislead the believers with a forged letter imitating Paul's style. Paul was forced to take precautions, and he says in 2 Thessalonians 3.17, 1, Thess- uh, 1 Corinthians 16.21, Galatians 6.11 and Colossians 4.8, I, Paul, write this greeting in my own hand, which is a distinguishing mark in all my letters. This is how I write. Many books fall under the category of pseudograph, including the Testament of Hezekiah, the Vision of Isaiah, the Books of Enoch, the Secrets of Enoch, the Books of Noah, the Apocalypse of Barak. Barak was Jeremiah's scribe, according to number, uh, Jeremiah 36.4, the rest of the words of Barak, the Psalter of Solomon, the Odes of Solomon, the Testaments of the Twelve Patriarchs, the Testament of Adam, the Testament of Abraham, the Testament of Job, the Apocalypse of Ezra, the Prayer of Joseph, Elijah the Prophet, Zechariah the Prophet, Zechariah, Father of John, the Itinerary of Paul, the Acts of Paul, the Apocalypse of Paul, the Itinerary of Peter, the Itinerary of Thomas, the Gospel according to Thomas, the History of James, the Apocalypse of Peter, and the Epistles of Barnabas. No other figure in church history shines as brightly as Athanasius. And Athanasius was born in 295 AD. He quickly rose through the ranks of the Alexandrian church. He became a personal assistant to the bishop who who was there uh, at the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD. Athanasius was the first to recognize what is now the 27 letters in the New Testament. The first list of the 27 books in the New Testament appears in 367 AD in a letter written by Athanasius, Bishop of uh, Alexandria. And it was not until after that date that uniform agreement on the list was found among all the teachers in the Catholic Church. Around the end of the second century, most of the 27 letters of the New Testament were accepted by the Catholic Church and were placed alongside of the Jewish scriptures. The word canon means stand or rule. The canon is a list of the authoritative and inspired scripture. And in Protestant Christianity, the the canon is the body of scripture that constitutes the 39 books of the Old Testament and the 27 books in the New Testament. And so what should we do with these pseudographic books? 
Well, Christians should treat studiographical books as not scripture. If you decide to read these books, you may read them as an interesting novel containing interesting stories from in- history, but you may not read them as the inspired, inerrant, sufficient, clear, authoritative word of God. We can rest as Christians, our confidence in the faithfulness of God the Father who would not lead his people for 2,000 years to trust his word as, as something other than it that isn't his word. And, and we find our confidence repeatedly confirmed both by historical investigation and by the work of the Holy Spirit enabling us to hear God's voice in a unique way as we read from every one of the 66 books of Scripture. In all known literature, there are no candidates that even come close to Scripture when consideration is given to doctrinal consistency with the rest of Scripture and to the type of authority they claim for themselves. And once again, the faithfulness of God to his people convinces us that there's nothing missing from Scripture that God thinks we need to know for obeying him and trusting him fully. The canon of Scripture today is precisely what God wants it to be, and it will stay that way until Christ comes. Revelation 22, 18 through 19, contains warnings of severe judgment for disobedience in adding or removing Scripture. Revelation is the only book of the New Testament to end with this kind of teaching, and it was the last book in the New Testament to be written. These facts all tell us that Revelation was the last book of the canyon and that the Bible was completed with it, so to either add or to delete Uh, from God's word would bring God's uh, displeasure and judgment. The early church, those closest in the times of the apostles, they believed Revelation concluded God's inspired writings of scriptures. Based on solid biblical reasoning, we can conclude that the canon will remain closed. So there's no need for additional books like those of the studiographical, nor should they be considered scripture. Well, I want to thank you for listening or watching this episode of the Servants of Grace Theology segment. Until next time, may the Lord richly bless you and keep you. Thank you for listening to the Servants of Grace podcast today. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe leave a rating on the app, and share our episode with your friends and family. If you'd like to, you can follow us on Instagram at Servants of Grace, on Twitter at Servants of Grace, or by searching Servants of Grace on Facebook. You can also find this podcast on the front page of our website at servantsofgrace.org.